In this video, we are going to transform the equation of a parabola from the general form to the standard or vertex form. So, bago tayo mag-rewrite ang equation ng parabola, tingnan muna natin kung ano yung mga forms ng kanyang equation. So, in general form, dalawa lang. Pwedeng y squared plus dx plus ey plus f equals 0. Or, pwede naman yung variable x ang naka-raise sa 2. x squared plus dx plus ey plus f equals 0. Of course, d, d, e, f, dito sa equation na to ay constants. Lahat yan. Habang yung ating general, I mean the standard or the vertex form, apat ang posibleng maging itsura. Dalawa para sa vertex na wala sa origin at dalawa naman para sa mga vertex na nasa origin. So kapag wala sa origin, ang pwedeng maging itsura ng standard form or vertex form is quantity y less k squared equals 4p multiplied by x less h. Pwede rin na yung x less h ang naka-square. Quantity x less h squared equals 4p multiplied by y minus k. Kapag ang iyong vertex naman is located at the origin, if it is at 0, 0, syempre walang h tsaka k. Meron ka lang y squared equals 4px or yung variable x naman ang naka-square, x squared equals 4py. So lang yung mga posibleng itsura ng ating equations. So just, let's go ahead and transform some equations. So we are asked to transform y squared minus 4x minus 12y plus 28 equals 0 to the standard form. Apparently, since gusto na maging standard form siya, itong equation na to ay nasa general form. So paano natin siya i-rewrite into the standard or the vertex form? Meron tayong series of steps na pagdadaanan. I recommend you write that down. Write the steps down sa iyong notebook para mas madaling mo siyang maalala. So, ang unang step is to group the terms with the same variable. Yung mga term na may variable y pagsamahin, term na may variable x pagsamahin, mga constant na term pagsamahin. Of course, unahin natin yung term na may pinakamataas na degree which is in this example's case is y, y squared. So, kung una siya, ang kasunod niya, yung term na may variable y din. So, negative 12 y. Followed by term na may variable x. Then, kung meron pang iba, ganun yung susunod. And then, followed by the constant, which is 28. Palaging huli yung constant, and then equal 0. Next thing is to move all of the terms na hindi y sa kabilang side. Means, aalisin ko tong negative 4x plus 28. Bakit? Kasi, gusto ko na yung mga variable y nandito sa left. Dahil yun yung may degree na 2, may exponent na 2. Kung halimbawa ito ay x squared, eh di yung mga terms na hindi variable x ang gamit, ang lilipat ko naman. Pero sa examples case na to, case na to, y ang nandito, yung may exponent na 2, so, yung hindi y, alisin natin. Kagaya ni negative 4x. Para mawala siya, mag-add tayo ng 4x. Because negative 4x plus 4x will be 0. In the same way, para mawala si positive 28 doon, mag-reduce tayo ng 28. Because 28 minus 28 is 0. And then, para manatiling equal yung equation, gawin natin sa kabilang side yung ginawa natin sa left. Nag-add ng 4x, add din tayo. Mag-subtract ng 28, subtract din tayo. We can now simplify. Sa left side, meron ka pa rin y squared minus 12y. Then on the right side, you have 4x minus 28. Constant pa rin ang nasa hulihan. The next thing to do is to use the completing the square method. Para itong y squared minus 12y natin ay maging perfect square trinomial. So basically, maghahanap tayo ng third term. So, sa right side, may 4x minus 28, and then, yung idadagdag mong term dito sa left, dapat gawin mo rin sa right. Again, ginagawa natin yun para manatiling equal yung equation. 
pinabago mo lang yung itsura, pero hindi yung overall value. So, paano natin hanapin yung third term? To do that, use the completing the square method. Kung saan ang unang ginagawa, to divide the coefficient of the second term by 2. Kung ano man yun, divide mo by 2. And then, yung magiging quotient, i-multiply mo sa sarili niya. Or, it's the same as squaring that number. So, negative 12 divided by 2 is negative 6. Multiply mo sa sarili niya. Or, negative 6 squared will be positive 36. Yung third term. Kung ano yung dinagdag ko doon, gagawin ko rin sa right side. Yan. Para balance pa rin. Now, our left side the equation is a perfect square trinomial na pwede nating i-represent as a square of a binomial. Para mas simple siya tingnan. Since this is a binomial, yung unang term dito manggagaling sa square root ng unang term mo sa trinomial. So, square root of y squared is simply y. Because y times y is y squared. Yan. And then, kung ano yung operation ng second term, yun na yung agad-agad mong gamitin dito sa pangalawa. Subtraction yun. Mag-subtract din tayo dito. And then, dito sa pangalawang term sa binomial, extract mo lang yung square root nung iyong last term, which is in this example's case, 36. Square root of 36 is 6. And in fact, yung negative 6 na yun, ito rin yun. Parehas lang. Na-express ko na yung perfect square trinomial ko as a square of a binomial. Sa left side, sa right side naman, pwede nating i-simplify. Pagsamayin natin yung dalawang constant. So, meron kang 4x then, negative 28 plus 36 will give you positive 8. Wala na tayong magagawa dito sa left side. So, mananatili yung y minus 6 raised to 2. Pero sa right side, pwede pa natin itong isimplify. Because we can factor out 4, which is the greatest common factor of 4x and 8. Factor out ko yung 4. Pag inalis ko si 4 sa 4x, matitira pa yung x. Pag inalis ko yung 4 sa 8, ilang 4 ba meron sa 8? Meron ka makuwang dalawa. Now, this equation right here is the standard or vertex form of this equation. So, ganun lang, ganun lang kasimple mag-rewrite o mag-transform ng equation from standard to vertex form. Notice na siya ay nasa form na y less k squared equals 4 t quantity x less h. Yan, ibig sabihin, mula dito, malolocate mo na agad yung vertex. Kasi yun yung h k mo. Yun, h, then k. Now it's your turn. Can you do this? Let me know in the comment section kung ano ang iyong magiging sagot. Kaya naman, kung merong bahagi ng video na to na hindi mo gaanong naunawaan, sabi mo rin sa akin para mas matulungan kita next time. That's all for this video. Thank you so much for watching.